Hello class! Today's topic is about introduction to Python. But it's not a worm, snake, or anything that crawl. It's a programming language. So what is Python? Let's go beyond to its meaning. Python is a multi-paradigm programming language, meaning it supports different programming approach. One of the popular approach to solve a programming problem is by creating objects. This is known as object-oriented programming or OOP. An object-oriented program is a collection of interacting objects. Each object is capable of sending and receiving messages and processing data. If we may use an analogy, the object's car, driver, and stoplight shows how OOP behaves. Whenever the driver sees the stoplight signal, he will stop the car brake and it will stop. The stoplight sends message to the driver. Then the driver gives command to the car. The car passes the request of the driver. Python is an object-oriented program because it uses objects. And every Python program is defined as a class. A class defines the characteristics of an object. We will discuss further about the class in our next video tutorials. For now, just remember a class is a blueprint for the object. We can think of a class as a sketch of a car with labels. It contains all the details about the year created, front, model, color, number of doors, and gene. An object has two characteristics, attributes, and behaviors. Attributes, these are the fields of properties. Behaviors, these are the methods or operations. In our example, class name is a car. The object is my parts. Characteristics include attributes such as the year, make, model, color, number of doors, and gene. And the methods include on, off, change gears, accelerate, decelerate, turn, brake. An application of the sample or the computerization of cars universally referred to as CBS or Computer Controlled Vehicle System. Now let's talk about Python as interpreted. Python is an interpreted language which reduces the edit, test, debug, because there is no compilation step required. In order to run Python apps, you need a runtime environment or interpreter to execute the code. Watch out for my video tutorials about creating first Python program. To learn more about SDHS, debug, cycle, and many more. Next, Python as a high-level programming language. According to the basic principles of coding, the factor that makes a language high-level is its distance from machine binary code. How many layers of code the language is away from the machine symbols O and 1 is what practically decides the level of any programming language. In software engineering world, Python is understood as a high-level, interpreted general purpose language. This means it is not your straight compiled language, but an interpreted dynamic language that has to be run in the given system using another program instead of its local processor. 
other languages turn into assembly when it is uh, compiled and run directly in the processor. Hence, being an interpreted language which is not subject to processor makes Python a high-level language. Also, Python offers convenience of code readability, which makes the syntax of the program much easier and shorter, resulting in less coding steps for developers. First, it is much easier to program in a high-level language. Programs written in a high-level language take less time to take less time to write. They are shorter and easier to read, and they are more likely to be correct. Second, high-level languages are portable, meaning they can run on different kinds of computers with few or no modifications. Low-level programs can run on only one kind of computer and have to be rewritten to run on another. Due to these advantages, almost all programs are written in high-level languages. Low-level languages are used only for a few specialized applications. Python offers many choices for web development. Frameworks such as Django and Pyramid, micro frameworks such as Flask and Battle, advanced content management systems such as Throne and Django CMS. On your screen, you can see Using Pygame, remove your gaming player and 2D game with Python and the arcade. If you're excited to see more samples of 2D and 3D games created with the help of Python, these are floods of video tutorials in YouTube, or you may want to wait for my video tutorials about gaming and Python. Python works on different platforms such as Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry, and a lot more. And it has an interactive and script mode. So, no need to worry about what kind of platform you are comfortable to use with, for it works on different platforms. One of the amazing features of Python is the fact that this is actually one person's work. Usually, no, new programming languages are developed and published by large companies employing lots of professionals and due to copyright rules. It is very hard to name any of the people involved in the project. Python is an exemption. There are many languages whose authors are known by name Python was created by Guido van Rusum, who was born in 1956 in Harlem, the Netherlands. Of course, Mr. Rusum did not develop and evolve all the Python components himself. The speed with which Python has spread around the world is a result of the continuous work of thousands. Very often, anonymous programmers, testers, users, many of them are not IT specialists and enthusiasts. But it must be said that the very first idea, the seed from which Python sprouted, came to one head, and that is no other than Mr. Rusum. For its name, Python, while well, you may know the Python as a large snake, the name of the Python programming language comes from an old BBC television comedy sketch series called Monty Python's Flying Circus. At the height of its success, the Monty Python team were performing their sketches to 
live audiences across the world, including at the Hollywood, rather Hollywood Bowl. Yes, at the Hollywood. Since Monty Python is considered one of the two fundamental nutrients to a programmer, the other being pizza, Python's creator named the language in honor of the TV show. Yes, that was in honor of that TV show, not because of the python snake. Best way to learn python. Here are some piece of advice. Just like any other programming language, you always need to start a small code samples. Again, the best way to learn how to build python programs is to write as much python code as you can. Soon, you'll work through dozens of some small code examples, completing the exercises and solving small coding challenges will help you learn more quickly. Programming is one of the skills where you need to practice a lot more than focus on the jury. At least spend 80% of your time writing code and 20% uh, learning the jury. As you learn more and more, you increase the practice ratio. That's good. As much as possible, practice daily. The more you can make your skill practice a habit, the easier it will be to follow through the results. But since programming is an intellectually complex skill, make sure to practice when your mind is at the sharpest. Some are doing it at night less distractions or after waking up we're in based on the research it is the state when our mind is at the sharpest if it doesn't work please don't give up right away new habits take time to form do it little by little don't pressure yourself programming is a kind of skill that never stops evolving you can't adopt you'll be left out company usually hire programmers like giving them assignments in languages they've never worked for so be careful to mention languages you do not know to the company you are applying for they are doing it to check how adaptable the applicants are and that is more valuable to them than to applicants who knows 95% of a language. Practice daily and don't give up when things get complicated. Remember why you are doing it. To enjoy and be financially stable. Practice, 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 coding, coding, and coding. It's on the top of the list. Because it's the most difficult and central piece of programming. By doing coding, you also realize your mistakes in designing, error handling, threading, and then go back to those respective skills to improve. You just cannot work in designing only. Coding produces output which is vital to learn and act as a success. Contributing to the open source code, especially from Apache, Google, and some other projects is another way to improve your programming skills and become a better programmer. Just signing their mailing list in the following discussion teaches you a lot. Try to practice with other programmers too, since most of the discussions happen between good programmers by listening to them and understanding problem and their approach, solution and view, automatically develop good programming, good programming habits on you. Yes, develop good programming habits on you. To get most of it, do not just sit passive. Ask questions, offer your view, but at the same time, value others as well. Write lots of programs, especially big programs. A lot of good practices become obvious once you've made the typical mistakes. 
Writing small program lets you write more programs in the same amount of time. This will improve some of your programming skills much more rapidly, but others not at all. Modify existing programs written by other people. That is good. It's not cheating. Learn from others. One of the fastest ways to improve your skill set is to leverage the knowledge and experience of people who entered the field before you. While a formal mentor is a great asset, it's not required. Seek out help from sources like your team lead, members of your local user group, show your code and ask for feedback. And don't let fear of criticism or feeling like you're bothering people prevent you from tapping into one of the most powerful resources available for leveling up your skill set. You'll be surprised at how eager to help many people. It's flattering to be asked to share expertise. Work on real projects. The surefire way to improve? Practice and challenging yourself. This means you should always be working on a coding project. Find an open source project to contribute to regularly. Build web apps for charity or tackle that silly app idea your body keeps pitching to you. There's no harm in trying with good intentions anyway. Share what you learn. As the old saying goes, the best way to learn is by teaching. When you learn something new, don't keep it to yourself. Share your new skill or finding in a blog, post. Record a screencast of yourself coding a new feature. Package your code into a library and put it on a GitHub. Or share anywhere else you can. Or present new discoveries at a local meetup or online webinars. Not only does sharing reinforce what you learn, but it demonstrates your skill to future employers and clients. Makes you feel good too. Make small daily improvements. No one masters programming overnight. It takes consistent, deliberate practice. Take a few minutes to slow down and make one small improvement every day. It could be learning a new language feature, reading a page out of the manual, or changing your editor configuration to add a shortcut for a common task. When compounded over time, these small daily improvements add up to major breakthroughs. Yes, you have to explore. Explore! Take a time out every week to explore new languages, technologies, and outside forces that shape our world. Knowledge and skills don't exist in a vacuum. Find two to three sources of new information to regularly tap into for inspiration. Never stop learning. Keep on practicing. And that ends our discussion. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye, class. This is Mom Says, signing off. I'm gonna make you pop like that. Make you pop.